especially today, and I, and I do say especially today because of, of what um, Dave was saying about, about social media, because this is where so many people get their morals and their values from. They're like making fun of it, I'm like, that's exactly what you are though. It's exactly what you're doing. You're making fun of it because you're trying so hard to be that thing. Because you, you've listened to so much um, social influence that tells you that that's what you're supposed to want to be. And so in making fun of it, you lack self-awareness that that's exactly what you're conforming to. That we've replaced of, of character and virtue and values from our families and we've outsourced it now to people whose only incentive is to get money out of it. We don't get those values from our families anymore. That's why we have those mental health disorders. Because we're no longer getting those things where we, we've always gotten them from. And then we say, but because times have changed. Fuck yeah, they have. Suicide rate is up for you, for, for you girls, what, 170%? Every measurable category of mental illness is up for teenagers. Essentially, the generations that came up with these devices in our hands where we were getting our social influence from. Do you think they really have a, a best interest in having you healthy, having you well, having you kind, having you well-adjusted? I left my M&Ms back there. As I could, I could eat my, my, my peanut M&Ms as I chastise you for doing stuff that you know is bad for you. With the peanut M&Ms, I can sit there and go, eh, no more, I can close the bag. But when uh, those other things get into your mind, they stay in your mind. You can't close the bag on the TikToks that you just saw. You can't close the bag on the Reddits that you've ingested. You can't close the bag on the videos and the ideas and things that you've heard expressed. Like, for example, um, you can have, you know, philosoph uh, philosophical idea, right? Made from some guy that went into the mountains, right? You can take that idea, but you can you can either choose to keep it there, or you can evolve it into something further than, and further into something big and greater, hmm. into a bigger tree. Okay. So why does he? Why does the person have to go to the mountains? To kind of leave the whole collective of society as, you know, more talking, more loudness, and it's disruptive of the mind. If you want to have clear thoughts, you have to have a clear bubble away from people. Okay. Self-exile. One more time, the last part. Self-exile. Self-exile, yes. Yeah. Okay, so, then if somebody has to, so we have to self-exile, and this is how we come up with ideas that are our own. What else do we have to have? I'm not, I'm not sure I asked the question. What else do we have to have in order to come up with our own ideas? Or at least ideas that we agree with. Are, are you saying that we, sh that we should conform our minds to our ideas? Or conform our ideas to our, to our preconceptions? In other words, do we begin with a conclusion and then say, okay, now why do I believe this? Or do we try to figure what we believe and then try to come to a conclusion? It can be both ways. I'm not, I'm not saying that it should be one way or the other. <clears throat> but if you have an idea already made, then try bringing it to a conclusion. And you use that conclusion to really fact check it. You know? okay. Maybe make it concrete. Uh, what's something you believe? I don't care if you believe it or not, but what, what's something a person would believe? Um, hmm. Doesn't matter. Something like, music is good for the soul. Okay, music is good for the soul. Okay, so should you begin with this idea of like walking and going, music is good for the soul. Now, why do I believe this? Or should it, or should we be thinking about things and then ultimately come to the idea? You know what? It, so it turns out after thinking about all of this, I've come to a conclusion. The conclusion is that music is good for the soul. Hmm. I think it's. That, that one that you're talking about just right now. So otherwise, if we, if we begin with the conclusion, then we run into a real danger, which is that we're only going to consider information that confirms what we think. And so we have to be willing to test new ideas, and to test new impressions. And this is the really hard part because it takes a good deal of humility to be able to do this. Um, I was talking to a... Um, it gets a little deep in the weeds, but um, I'll just I'll, I'll try to explain as quickly as possible. Long story short, there's a a, a jujitsu gym up in Del Mar, where the owner was recently sued, and he lost the case, forty-six million dollars. 
because he paralyzed somebody. It was, um, I saw the video of it. It was just an accident. It's just one of those things. He wasn't being negligent. He wasn't being super rough. It's just, we're not making cookies. Sometimes stuff like that just happens. Um, anyway, a friend of mine is just hyper obsessed with this thing. And it's, it almost seems like every living moment he's talking to me about, with the, about this thing. And I kind of get it. But anyway, um, one of the guys who, who testified on behalf of the plaintiff is a very well-known guy. His name is, is, is Henry Gracie. And my friend was talking about how wrong this guy is about everything that he's saying. And I asked him, well, have you, what does he, what does Henry say? And the only thing he had from this guy's comments were newspaper articles. The guy testified in court for a couple of days, for I think a day or two, I think it was two days. And I was, I was saying to him, why don't you find out what, what Henry actually said, said. And so he was, again, Henry's just 100% wrong. Um, he ended up finding a video online from Henry Gracie where he explains, here's why I think this thing was negligent. And he, the guy lays out his own video and explains why. So basically he takes his court testimony and he summarizes it in this video. And then my friend says, okay, you know, I can see, I can see why Henry said that. Um, I still <coughs> kind of disagree with him, but I can see why he would believe that. You see how he went from this guy is 100% wrong, the guy's only doing it for money, he's a real piece of crap, he's destroying the community, to literally, one day later, I can see why he's saying that. I can see why he believes that. And I, still kind of dis I still disagree with most of what he says, but I can see why he would say that. Henry's a piece of crap. Let me go find out why he is. You know, let me find out if he is. Uh, I still kind of disagree with him, but... And this is the thing that a lot of us avoid this kind of, of reasoning. We kind of begin with the conclusion in mind. And it's an uncomfortable thing for us because we have to acknowledge that that's what we're doing. That's hard, because I think about the kinds of things that you hold really, really near and dear to your heart. You know, I mean, I don't know, I mean, think about, especially today, and I, and I do say especially today because of, of what um, it was saying about, about social media, because this is where so many people get their morals and their values from. And why? I don't want you guys raising your hands, I don't want anybody to, to out themselves, but I wonder how many of us in here have strong family units? How many of us have two parents at home? How many of us have... You know, aunts and uncles around, how many of us are, are doing that whole thing, and how many of us get our value structure from there, versus how much time, how much time a day do we spend with our families, versus how much time do we spend with influencers. And of course, you think, you know, you think influencers really have your best interests at heart. You know, they're, they're corporate sponsors. For some reason, we hate corporations, but we love influencers. We get, we, we get pissed off at our, at, our, at our families who get no money out of us, who really love us and have, and have our best interests at heart. It doesn't mean they're right. It doesn't mean they're right, but they certainly have our best interests at heart. What are, what, what's the interest that influencers have at heart? They want to get paid. They want, they, want, they want to get clicks. They want to get views. And because all of that translates into dollars for them. For some reason, we will watch this thing and just go, yeah, that's right, and, and give no care at all about how much money they get out of it. But, we will be pissed off at, at the church for collecting money once a week on Sundays. All they want is your money. What the fuck do you think the influencers want? Why are we so quick to listen to their moral message, which is driven 100% by their desire for money? Why is it that we will complain about uh, corporations like Starbucks and like, all they want is your money? Well, we don't actually do that. We love that. We like to go to Starbucks and, and, and make fun of people like I was... I was, um, I was at a Starbucks it was last year. It was, I, I, I still laugh about it because you talk about a complete lack of self-awareness. There were these five girls that were there, um, all of them black, and they had coffee, and they, and they took a selfie, and they said, white girl, Starbucks, they were like, making fun of it. I'm like, that's exactly what you are, though. It's exactly what you're doing. You're making fun of it because you're trying so hard to be that thing, because you have a sense of, because you, you've listened to so much um, social influence that tells you that that's what you're supposed to want to be. And so in making fun of it, you lack self-awareness that that's exactly what you're conforming to. And I hear that all the time. I don't see much of that at Starbucks, but I do see a lot of people making fun of it and then going there anyway. Why? Because of a complete lack of self-awareness. Because we're programmed to go there. We'll talk crap about it. Just like we'll be programmed to not like certain people, and we'll talk crap about them afterwards. But... You're still giving them clicks, aren't you? You're still giving them dollars, aren't you? Yeah, but it's just because they're so stupid. But you're still giving them the thing that, that you want. 
it goes back to this idea that we've replaced this, this, this learning of, 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 of character and virtue and values from our families, and we've outsourced it now to people whose only incentive is to get money out of you. And what kind of things do you think that people are going to tell you? Exactly what you want to hear. Exactly what you want to hear. <clears throat> tell me, do you really think you're getting something useful out of that? If you spend a lot of time online, there's incredible correlation, by the way, between time spent online and mental health disorders. Yeah. And so the more, the, the more time you spend online, the more likely you are to have a mental health disorder. Now, we can argue about why that is. Maybe it's because we watch online and everyone's constantly telling us, I, you know, I, I have anxiety, I have this, I have depression, I have this, and so now we start, it's called social contagion. You see other people who have it, you see that they get influenced by having it, and then suddenly, you know what, I have social anxiety too. Yeah, I have this thing too. It becomes contagious. And so, are we really getting anything good at it? Or maybe we're just, or, may, or maybe the reason that, that, we, that we get that is because we've been left to our own devices, literally our own devices, cell phone devices, <clears throat> And that's become our babysitter. That's become our, our, our surrogate parent growing up. And so because we are values from here, and maybe because we don't get those values from our families anymore, that's why we have those mental health disorders. Because we're no longer getting those things where, we, where we've always gotten them from. And then we say, but because times have changed. Fuck yeah, they have. Suicide rate is up for you, for, for you girls, what, 170% since, since, the, uh, since the advent of, the, of, of social media and the cell phone? Guys, your, so, your, your suicide, we're down a little bit. So good for us. Good for us. Every measurable category of mental illness is up for teenagers. And, speci and, and specifically, actually, uh, early 20s, uh, teenagers up to mid 20s. Essentially, the generations that came up with these devices in our hands where we were getting our social influence from. Do you think they really have a, a, a vested interest in having you healthy, having you well, having you kind? Having you well adjusted? No. They don't. And the thing is, we intuitively know that. We intuitively know that. And yet, we will still do it. But it's not a surprise, though. Like, we talk about that like we're so dumb. Like, how could you possibly do something that you know is going to be harmful to you? Shit, sorry. I, I don't have a Diet Coke with me to sip while I say that. <laughs> I have a coffee. Yeah, I have a coffee, but my, I left my M&Ms back there. As I could, I could eat my, my, my peanut M&Ms as I chastise you for doing stuff that you know is bad for you. Because that's what we do. The question is how bad. The problem, though, is that with the, with the peanut M&Ms, I can sit there and go, huh, no more. I can close the bag. But when all those other things get into your mind, they stay in your mind. You can't close the bag on the TikToks that you just saw. You can't close the bag on the Reddits that you've ingested. You can't close the bag on the videos and the ideas and things that you've heard expressed. And then you have a huge problem, which is that you're only given one side of those arguments. And so you come to believe that what well, everybody, every rational person believes this. This is what my generation believes. Now, all generations believe something completely different. That's because the other ideas are banned from those platforms. You're not allowed to hear them. They're suppressed. They're shadow banned. They're not promoted. I mean, I don't know what, what more evidence you need. You know, there's a, there's a Chinese version of TikTok. And you know what the algorithms over there press? Science, education, culture, technology. Look at our, uh, uh, what the algorithms here push. Disorder, chaos, mental health diseases. You, you realize that's by design, I hope. And if you don't, then guess what? It worked. There were congressional hearings about this two weeks ago. I wonder how many of us even know about this. The CEO, the, the CEO of, of TikTok refused to answer a bunch of questions about this, just refuse fl flat out to answer why the algorithms were different between the two countries. Yeah. You don't think that that's by design? And we'll know it, and we'll walk into it, because there's an overproduction of culture. There's so much coming at us all the time that we don't have time for anything else. Here comes old man Scamma. Mm -hmm. When I was your age, <laughs> we had... We had cable. I think cable is out already. We had basically there were three network television stations: ABC, NBC, and CBS. And then there was like Fox, but you know no one ever watched that. Channel Eleven when I was in Los Angeles. And when those those, those three stations, they would off the air, 
I can't remember what time it was. But there was a certain time where they figured no one's watching, so they would go off the air. And then they would start programming again in the morning, like 5 a.m. or whatever it was. So when you, uh, and so when you're, if, if there were, if, if, if one night there were three TV shows on, because there were only three networks, if you didn't like those, t those, three, uh, those three shows, guess what you were doing? Something else <laughs> besides this. But now you can go on your phone and you would never run out of videos to see. You never run out of culture. So, so, you, so you never go and do anything else. You don't have to. It's normal. It's natural. And again, we, I don't, people <coughs> present this oftentimes in a chastising way. Oh, you shouldn't. Da, 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 da. What would my generation have done if we had cell phones? The exact same thing as what we're doing right now. There's no difference in the people. It's that, it's that production. And so because there wasn't this, because it wasn't television and TikTok, we had to go do other things. We had to learn how to fix cars. We had to learn how to do plumbing. We had to learn how to, we had to, we had to go outside, go to the mountains. We had to go play sports. Somebody asked me just last night, <clears throat> have you seen a difference in your students between when you first, first started, which is 14 years ago, which is when the cell phone first came out, by the way, and your students now? And I said, oh, yeah. And he was talking specifically about physical development. So, oh, yeah. We've known each other a little bit, right? Yeah. Fuck it. Why not? Some of you guys are just fucking soft, man. You just see soft individuals walking around. You can see a difference between those of you who play some kind of a sport or some kind of an activity and the, and the overwhelming majority who do not. Who just do not. You're, you have developed differently. You look different. You carry yourselves different. Your expressions are different. When you walk through that door, I can look at you and go, athlete. And I don't just mean that you play a sport here. I mean you do something physical, something activity. I can look at you when you walk, literally, walk, watch you walk down the hallway and say, that person had a rough play when they were a kid. They had a dad or an aunt or somebody who would pick them up and throw them on the bench so they would bounce and throw them down again until they hit the wall. And they would laugh about it. Some of you. And then some of you I see that you're, you're, you're not. Now, why not? Because you have, we've had that babysitter our whole lives. And it's not good for you. This is why I tell you this, but I don't think it's going to change anything, of course. But you can never say, no one ever told you. But you can look at yourself and say, oh, shit, this guy's an asshole. He's talking about me. I'm not talking about anybody specific in here. But if you know, the shoes fit, you know, <laughs> you choose to put them on or find some new shoes. But that's part of the problem with an overproduction of culture. It isn't just that there's so much coming at us. It's that because there's so much coming at us, we don't ever go and do anything else. Why would you? Here's your choice, guys. Watch TikTok videos or go run a few miles. Who's ready to go run some miles with me? <laughs> yeah, here's your choice. Watch some TikTok videos and be entertained or go up in the mountains with me. There's mosquitoes and bugs up there right now, but who wants to go hiking? Yeah, exactly. Who would? Who would? If you've never done it before, who would? Um, when I was growing up, I, I had this, this, this friend of mine who her, um, her aunt and uncle had two kids, and <laughs> they experimented on them. The, yeah, exactly. The older one, they never gave him any candy. Only gave him vegetables, fruits, um, water, stuff like that. Never gave him soda, never gave him candy. And then their, their next one who was born, they let him have that stuff. And there's such a stark difference between these two kids. The older one, they, they weren't like teens. They were still like, I think like, like whatever, was like eight and six, something like that. And the eight-year-old, if you tried to give him like candy, he'd be like, ew, gross. He's actually turned off by this stuff. Like, ew, that's nasty. Why would you eat that stuff? <laughs> And yet, he'd never eaten it before, but he knew, he knew that it was nasty because you know, he'd never experienced the other stuff before. He just kind of knew. Again, I don't know if you know what I mean when I say he knew this. You know? And they would, their, their tastes were so completely different. Their activities were also so completely different. You know, it affects so many things. And so if it's, if it's all you've ever known, if you grew up running around outside and hiking and doing all that stuff, then that would just seem normal and natural to you. If you didn't, then it wouldn't seem normal and natural to you. But you have that choice of, of asking yourself if it really is the fulfilling life that you want. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe the, the focus of your life is to be entertained. And if that's your choice, then yeah, there's no problem with that. I just, I, I just really hope it's this. You know, life is for the luck, therefore, the purpose of life is to be entertained. And if that's your conclusion, man, that, that's your life, and, and I hope it's fulfilling for you. And I genuinely mean that. I would just warn us about this, because culture tends to do this to us. It gives us a, a conclusion to start from. 
here's what you should believe, here's what your generation believes, here's what everyone believes. And so therefore, now, who cares why? We'll explain why later. But this is the, the first and foremost thing. Because culture is overpowering. You know, you realize that the foods you eat, because of the families you grew up in, places you grew up in, the ideas that you have, all of these things. <clears throat> I think the problem is that we present this so often as being something, like there's something wrong with you for, for doing this. There's not. This is how most people operate because this makes sense. And culture does have a great value. It doesn't, you know, imagine if you had to, if you had to, um, like, figure everything out from square one on your own. You know? yeah, culture gives you a pre-made lens through which to interpret the world, and it's very useful. It's functional. But at some point, we can make the choice to do this. It's just hard to do this, because imagine if you've been doing something your whole life, and all of a sudden you realize how, how terrible and stupid it has been. I guess what I'm saying is, imagine if you've liked soccer your whole life, and you thought about it, and you really realized how stupid the sport is. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques?